it's vlogmas day two today's actually december 1st saturday morning it is 6:46. i've been up for about an hour and uh roxy here is gonna help me edit my videos i think she just walked in i don't think she's quite awake yet and i hear someone hello oh it's baron he's such a rebel look at that thing Look how cute they are. I just came across this story. Payless opened a fake luxury store and sold $20 shoes for hundreds of dollars. I'm going to link it below so you can watch the video. Here's my outfit of the day. My champagne bag from Louis Vuitton. My vintage champagne bag because I'm going to a winery. We're on our way to the wineries. Actually, we're on our way to my mom's house first. And the kids are sleeping in the back. They're going to stay at their grandma's house for the day. Bye, doggies. We heard this noise suddenly on the freeway, like metal scraping under the car. You see it? Goodness, that thing's huge. I hear that all the time. This is Peach Creek Winery. We're on the Blue Bonnet Wine Trail. This is our first stop. I got a shot of the front of the building earlier, but it was backlit with the sun, so it probably didn't come out very well. And I forgot to get our first course. They gave us some um, pork loin with a cranberry applesauce that they made. And when you do one of these wine trails, like an official one where you buy the tickets and stuff, they give you this Blue Bonnet Wine Trail glass, it says it on both sides, and you do all your tastings out of that. And they give you two wine tastings and uh, the little food sampling. So we're gonna do one more winery today. Isn't this pretty out here? I was saying on the way there were lots of hay fields with ponds and things, and the sky is so blue today that it reflects in the ponds and against the dry yellow, it's more green here, but against the dry yellow, it was a beautiful contrast. Like they have the donkey tied up so it won't get away. This is Messina Hoff Winery. This is one of our favorite wineries on the wine trail. That's the tasting room. And then the vineyards are back there. And then there's their restaurant. Um, everything on the menu or almost everything on the menu is made with wine. They have, I think the winemakers from Italy, so they have these Murano chandeliers in here. And then, let's see if it'll focus, that building over there is a bed and breakfast. We've never stayed there, but it's, uh, you can do tours and see inside, it's beautiful. They have um, more of the Murano chandeliers and some other gorgeous things. They have a really nice gift shop here. And then there's a tasting bar here and a tasting room in the back. And there's another room on the other side with um, more wine. This is a very big operation, this winery. They're big in Texas. They've got, I think just about every one of those is a different flavor of wine. Pond outside with turtles and then the saddle. These are cool because these are from the big Houston Rodeo and they have a wine competition and that's one of the prizes. Here, let's cheers to Joe. Happy birthday, Joe. So we just did some tastings and stuff and we're about to head back to my mom's house in Katy. We're gonna spend the night there because 
she is about an hour closer to the wineries than we are and we're gonna go to some more wineries tomorrow so we figured we'd save some time and some gas and stay there. I feel like as I'm filming, you know, this vlogging thing is really new to me. This is just day two. Really awkward filming in public, and then it's really, really awkward filming and talking or narrating in public. So I feel like I've done a few shots today that show you things, but then I'm not talking, and I don't know if that's boring. <sighs> Mosquitoes in Texas are like the size of elephants. We were sitting at the bar having our wine flight tasting, and I was working on our Christmas card. I just did the little pencil sketch, so I'm gonna show that to you now, and I don't know how clear it is really, but I'll show you the final version too that's in pen and ink. This one's just in pencil and it's uh, a sketch. So here it is. When I do the final pen version, I will explain it better, but that's what it looks like right now. I also wanted to do the 12 days of Christmas and the reflection question. The charity day two is make a wish. And I know I said yesterday that I was doing kind of unusual ones and make a wish is a really popular one that a lot of people know about. Mosquito, <sighs> I hate mosquitoes. But I love make a wish because it's so cool. You're not just donating money for something that you don't know where it goes. There are particular wishes for sick kids that you can donate towards. And they have, they have something called Adopt-A-Wish, and I have the links to this below, where you can donate money to a particular wish. So you're not just throwing money at the Make-A-Wish Foundation. You can put money toward a particular child's wish that you're especially interested in. You can also donate to make a wish come true, which is really cool. So I'll put that below. And then also I'll put a link to Macy's. They do this thing, um, which at the moment I'm forgetting the name of, but you can write letters to Santa at Macy's online. And for every letter to Santa they get, they donate a dollar to make a wish. So I think that's really cool. That's something fun you can do with your kids or even for yourself if you're an adult or a teenager or something. For the reflection question, the question for today was, what's one thing from the last year that you would tell your grandchildren about? Right now I don't know what that is. I might have to turn the camera off and then um, tell you later tonight what it is. I need to think about it more. But I did wanna say that I wouldn't be telling my grandchildren about it because I will not be having grandchildren. I have never ever had interest in having children and because of that I will never have grandchildren. So there's that. But if there's a moment that stands out particularly that I would want to tell somebody about, I don't know at the moment what that would be. Um, I'll have to think about that and then get back to you in a few seconds, in a few hours, whatever it turns out to be. If there's something you would tell your grandchildren about, what would it be? Leave that in the comment section below, please. I wanted to show you these tanks. So there's the tasting room and there are these tanks where they put the wine. We've done several tours here at Messina Hof and they have some really cool holiday tours. Um, we did one at Halloween and one at Christmas where you can taste wine directly from these tanks, which pretty much tastes awful <laughs> at that point. And then you can also do barrel tastings, but I wanted to make sure I come and show you these. So here we're going inside the tank. Ooh, hello, echo, echo. And the tank goes all the way up. Hello. So I just wanted to show you that for those of you who've never seen it. And then here's some barrels. And my, the barrel tastings are my favorite because the wine is pretty much ready by the time you do barrel tastings. And of course these barrels are sitting outside but they wouldn't normally be. They're probably gonna be filled up. They're empty definitely because they don't have corks in them at the moment. And then over here are some of the vines and it's December, so the vines are uh, not very active right now. They don't have much on them. And then here's the back of the restaurant. So when the vines are nice and green and they've got leaves and grapes on them, you can sit in the restaurant there and look out over the vineyards and it's just really pretty. We love going to wineries and doing tastings at different points in the winemaking process. That's just so interesting. We're back in Katy at this Mexican restaurant near my mom's house. 
that we always go to. They have really strong margaritas and some really good Mexican food, so we're gonna go have dinner there. <laughs> Yes, sir. Steel. <laughs> Steel. All right. Enjoy me. All right. Muy caliente. Muy caliente. He had to climb. He had, he actually got a ladder out to get into that truck. I forgot to record it, but he did. He had to get a like a 20 foot ladder out to get in that truck. Hi guys. Go pee somewhere. Oh, Baron, you're gonna pee right there. You're not gonna go out in the yard. Baron made an artwork look. Look at this cute little baby tree. It's like this tall. It's so cute. I wanted to uh, tell you a story real quick. I had to, made a, I had to make a quick grocery run. We just got back to my mom's house and I had to run to Kroger. But I wanted to tell you in light of President Bush dying yesterday. We woke up to that news this morning. I wanted to tell you, and I feel weird because I'm right by a door, and I don't really want people to see me because it's so weird to talk to your camera when in public. Um, but I wanted to tell you about a little story about him. So the boyfriend once was at a meeting, and he went back to his car, and he has a handicap license plate, and he also volunteers with the city, and he's able to write handicap license plate tickets or handicap parking tickets. So if somebody violates a handicap parking law, he can write them a ticket. So he was pulling out of his handicap space in this parking garage, multi-level parking garage, and there was this black SUV that was waiting for him to back up even though there were several other empty handicap spots. So he was already curious about it. So he pulls out of his spot and he starts going down the garage. Meanwhile, he's watching in his rear view mirror, this black SUV and they pull into the spot that he was in, but not just that spot, several spots. They pull like sideways across several spots. So he parks his car and he starts walking back up to this black SUV to write them a ticket for parking across these spots because who does that, right? So there are these guys that get out of the car and they're standing there and they're staring at the boyfriend. So he's anticipating because often when you write a ticket, the person that has the car will argue with you and sometimes it gets really contentious. So he's anticipating some kind of aggression, right? So he walks up and he's watching and being careful and then he sees some of the guys open the back door and let this other guy out of the car. And eventually he notices it's President Bush. And it turns out that President Bush's offices were in that, you don't hear that car, it's so loud. It turns out President Bush's offices were in that same building. So the boyfriend was about to write a parking ticket to President Bush and the Secret Service. But needless to say, he didn't do that. He let them off with just a friendly wave, and that was it. So that's one of my President Bush stories. Um, sorry about all the noise here. There are cars, there are like shopping baskets being pushed around. I'm inside Kroger, and look at this. They have this whole selection of nutcrackers. I have a small collection of nutcrackers, and of course, I was drawn to this one. It's a policeman and his German Shepherd. Oh my god, that's so cute. If you don't know about this ice cream, it is called Bluebell. It's made in Brenham, Texas, which is where we're gonna be next weekend at the wineries. It is the best ice cream in the world. Nobody can argue with that. It's just a fact. Hurricane Ike hit back in, I think it was 2008. Bluebell was the first thing that was back in stock after all the freezers were down because the electricity was down. So I was actually in this store and all of these freezer aisles were totally empty except the Bluebell cases. Best ice cream in the world, no argument, and I'm about to buy some. Here the boyfriend, I brought you bacon. Don't say I never gave you anything. <laughs> she brought home the bacon. 
Yes, I did. I'm the only one who does. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're at my mom's house and she has cleaned out my sister's room and made it into a guest room and I haven't seen it yet. So let's see our accommodations for tonight. Okay, well, there we are. How do we turn the light on? There we go. Let's see. Ah, not so bad, not so bad. I think I could sleep here. 